was very isolated, and he used to always sit on the unit with his head like this. He didn't really talk to much people, and then when I introduced the music to him, this is his reaction ever since. <laughs> So in some sense, Henry has reacquired his, his identity for a while through the power of music. What does music do to you? It gives me the feeling of love, no, no man. Because right now the world needs to come into music, singing, you got beautiful music here. Beautiful, oh, lovely. And uh, I feel the band of love. In 2006, I was listening to a journalist talking about how iPods are ubiquitous, they're everywhere. And I thought, well, young people all have them, many adults, uh, but a nursing home, and if I'm ever in a nursing home, would I have access to my favorite 60s music? So I did an internet search on iPods and nursing homes. And even though there are 16,000 nursing homes in the U.S., I couldn't find one that was using iPods for the residents. So I called up a local nursing home and I said, uh, I know music's already your number one recreational activity, but can we see if there's any added value if we were to totally personalize personalized music for individuals. So I came in with my laptop and some iPods, and it was an instant and definitive hit um, with folks there. Well, talk about what happens. Talk about the transformation. Well, for, when I first started, they didn't uh, uh, connect me with people with dementia. They didn't really know me. I was a volunteer coming in. Um, but, the, but still, for people who are cognitively sharp as attack, uh, but have physical issues, it really transformed their mood, their emotion. Uh, people who were depressed now were, were feeling better. People who were not very interactive with others became more social. Um, so um, it just had different benefits for everybody. Um, set up this clip for us. It's the clip about Denise. Well, Denise is a bipolar schizophrenic, is very um, sort of um, busy with a lot of thoughts and, and, and trying to sort of make her way through the day. The, the, the music, and very raw with emotions in, in all different directions, happy and sad and angry. Um, and the, the music helps to, well, gives her a source of enjoyment and distracts her from that. Um, and it's just really a real benefit for, for her. So this clip begins with one of the people who work at the nursing home, and then Denise. Denise is probably an extreme resident that we have here. I'm being emphatic, and I have a very vivid imagination. I'm very resilient, but I drop. And I keep on trying, and I drop. But I never stop, and I drop. One of these days I'm gonna drop and stay on the floor. I won't fall. Okay. I've lived here two years and never fall. Good. I couldn't believe the music let Denise push away her walker. She'd been using that walker every day for two years. <laughs> We'd seen what music can do for memory, but with Denise, we saw what music can do for the spirit. An excerpt from uh, Live Inside, a story of music and memory. For our radio audience, that clip, yes, began with Denise sitting in her wheelchair. Then she's given headphones playing salsa music. The clip ends with her standing up and dancing. Um, we're joined by Dan Cohen, who's a social worker who thought of bringing in these headphones to the nursing home, and Michael Rosado Bennett, who filmed all of this. Michael, talk about how you came into this. Um, 
Well, I, I, we were, um, I saw, you know, Dan had a, um, a beautiful um, project and I, I'd done work for the Shelley and Donald Rubin Foundation and um, I was asked to help out a little bit and I, when I saw what was happening I was like that the only way to tell the story is through film because this is, you know, so amazing. And um, But I, I had, a, when I was younger, I, I had like a lot of kind of bad experiences in hospitals and I, I, I went into these nursing homes with Dan and I saw all these elders just sort of sitting along along the walls and with their heads down and, and, and it was a very scary experience for me to be there and I couldn't, I really actually couldn't imagine, can you imagine living in that environment, ending your life in that environment and I, it, was, it was actually sort of frightening for me to actually enter this place that was their home, you know, and so then one of the first people, if not the first pe person that I, I saw was, was Henry. You know, we set up our cameras and, 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 and this guy came in and, and he was just completely gone to the world, right? And, and then when, when he got his headphones and when he, when he came alive, um, you know, like we talk about it in the film, but there, there is a sort of a, a kinesthetic reaction that happens to you when you see somebody like come to life. It, it really just completely does something to you. And you know, I, that first day I cried literally five times and I don't, I don't ever cry, ever. And you know, you see these people living just really such sad lives. And certainly, Dan, this goes beyond people with dementia or Alzheimer's. Yes, just the way we all love music, and when we get older, we're going to still love music. And so, just because someone is uh, in a nursing home and they're old and they can no longer operate equipment, and uh, they very often lose access to their favorite music. So, we really want to restore that access for everyone, um, regardless of whether they have dementia or not. And talk about how it taps into something. It not only they're not only just you know rocking out to the beat. It's bringing back memories. They're sometimes talking, and they haven't talked. In months? Yes. Yeah, so with uh, advanced dementia, um, people no longer can recognize their own <coughs> family members. They can stop speaking. Uh, but when they hear music that's familiar from their youth, because those memories are preserved, they come alive. They connect with that. It's a direct sort of a backdoor to that failing cognitive system, right to the emotional system, which is really very much intact. And what we love, what music does, the way we connect with music is really very much emotional and visceral. Let's go to another clip from Alive Inside, a story of music and memory. This is recreation therapist Yvonne Russell. I have one resident that barely opened her eyes. She didn't respond. As much as I tried, I knew her for two years. No matter what I tried, massage wouldn't work, nothing worked. But when we got introduced to the iPods and the family told me the things that she liked, it was amazing once we put the iPod on her. She started shaking her feet. She started moving her head. Her son was just amazed. Okay, can we stop? Because now I'm getting no aura. <laughs> I'm seeing her all over again. That was Yvonne Russell, the recreation therapist in the nursing home, describing her patient. I mean, Dan, d for the people listening on radio who can't see, and just overall, talk about what happened to this woman who was laying in the bed. This woman's laying, and she's kind of in a fetal position, and her eyes closed, and she's really, you know, end of life, and there's no, um, there's no sitting up. She's bedridden, um, and the the music comes on, and who she appears comatose at first, but she then starts shaking right to the to the mu music, her, her head's moving, her body's moving, um, even though her eyes are closed and she's lying down in this fetal position. It's, it's just really moving to, to watch. You know, um, uh, years ago, my grandmother well, lived till 108, and um, she wasn't senile. She did not suffer from dementia. But in those last years, she was very hard of hearing. And I, I was talking to her. I was racing off for a radio interview, and I said, I have to go. She said, what, darling? I said, I have to leave. And she said, what, darling? I'm, I'm so frustrated. So I said, and I realized, I'm holding my tape recorder and the headphones. And I just put them on her head. And I said, I have to go, Grandma. I said, so then what's keeping you? <laughs> and that just 
changed everything. I spoke into the mic and I put the headphones on her. So then when we have lunch with my brothers and my mom, I would put the headphones on her and I'd say, let's pass the mic when we're talking, just even to each other, not even to her. And then she is a part of the conversation because so often older people, I mean, people are polite. They don't want to keep saying, what? Michael, let me ask you about that, that experience of not just music, but hearing people's voices and full throttle. Right. It's, it's, it, that, that's one of the things that touched me so much about this whole experience is that for, for people with dementia, they're really struggling with the outside world and the, the stimulus is so overwhelming and they don't have the ability to sort of uh, discern you know, what's what's happening and when you put headphones on a person like that what there's there's a double gift not only is the music incredible but what you're doing is you're limiting the world to something that 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 is totally pleasurable and is simple and and is, is has a lot of um, the beat is like it keeps going there's a lot of faith involved in it and so the world becomes a much more beautiful place <laughs> Like the entire, the entire like craziness of maybe the play, the institution that they're living in disappears. And, and one thing that was so profound for me was the, the depth of emotion that they were capable of. Do you know, like you see these people and, and you can't help but say, you know, they're, they're not as alive as the rest of us. But then when you see them, the, the world kind of going into a place where they're comfortable and where they're they're deeply profound that was what really blew me away was that these people that that sort of it seemed like everyone thinks are gone are literally capable of profound experience at the level that we are you know and that was a shocker for me and 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 you know. I, I Every part of this film, I mean, you deal overall, Dan, with the issue of what you call elderhood. What are we doing with the older people in our society who could contribute so much in nursing homes? We're not talking about rat-infested, cockroach-crawling nursing homes. The very opposite. We're talking about clean, antiseptic, four white walls, people who already their lives sort of stripped away from them, their identities they've known. That's what they're left with in the last years of their life. And yet there's so much that could be, so much that could be. So uh, the... Um Nursing homes, because our society reduces every year the amount of money going to nursing home care, uh, the nursing homes filled with great staff, um, dedicated people, um, have to do the same, uh, um, give the same level of service every year to this to uh, to this group of people, and and so as a result, they they have to um, have activities for the group as opposed to the individual. But when we're in a nursing home, there are all sorts of individual activities and hobbies we'd like to do, but but it's just it's very hard for them to carry that out. So as a society, we. We need to really support these long-term care facilities. What are the numbers we're talking about? One million people in nursing homes? So 1.6 million approximately living in 16,000 nursing homes, plus another million people living in assisted living facilities. Uh, Forty percent of those folks in assisted living have some form of dementia as well. Uh, and then you have seven million people being cared for at home, and of course five million of all uh, of five million people in the U.S. have dementia. You say in the film doctors can write out a prescription for a thousand dollars for antidepressants, but it's hard to get $40 for a CD player. Yes, it just doesn't, uh, it's not reimbursable, it's not an acceptable expense. And the so drug companies the drugs, don't make money. Um, and, and well, right now, the, the, our system is set up that if it's, if it's a drug, regardless of what it is, regardless of the side effects, um, because we are really um, um, giving these folks antipsychotic medications to help calm them down, but they're really not meant for this, and the, the side effects are, are, are so uh, dramatic uh, that the government is telling them, please, all doctors, uh, slow down on your use of these and doctors in nursing homes and also someone at home whose mom might have been uh, behaving out of control and, and the daughter says, uh, Doc, give my mom something, please. So it's, it's just our approach to, like, we need medications. To, and you to talk help. about how in other cultures, elders are brought into society. At work, I mean, being there with children who are left alone also, but people are so isolated. We have no place now in our society. 
Well, that, that's very true. And so now we have these institutions where uh, we'd love to get the community in more. Uh, so I, I like to say that, gee, my local uh, school, I can hardly find a parking space, but it's never a problem in a nursing home. But as people with dementia become, when, when I started this, people said, Dan, you're going to isolate people even more by putting headphones on them. And it turned out just the opposite happened. People became more social. Oh, you've got to hear this. This, remind, this reminds me when I met my husband. Or you're about my age. Remember the And Andrew you have sisters. kids bringing in so let's, I, I, um, iPad, iPods to older people, yes. and then they're hanging out with the older people together. Yes.